Hello my dear friends, being an NRI that is a non-resident Indian is certainly I can understand a proud moment for you as you are not only earning precious foreign currency, even you are deploying that foreign currency which you earn outside India to India as an investment and such an investment which is made by you in India helps in building up the forex reserves as a country of India. But as a NRI, a very important question which you may face is should you file ITR in India or not? In recent past, I have seen income tax department issuing notices to various NRIs for not filing their ITR in India. So whether as NRI you are liable to file ITR in India or not, this is an important question which we are going to discuss through today's video. Now the very first point which I would like to discuss with you is to know the answer of the question who is an NRI? NRI means non-resident Indian. To answer this question, I would like to refer to the provision of section 115C of Income Tax Act 1961, my dear friend, which says that non-resident Indian means an individual, only an individual can be NRI, being a citizen of India or a person of Indian origin who is not a resident. So if you are not a resident in India, but you are a citizen of India or a person of Indian origin, then by default you will be treated to be NRI. Now the question comes, who is a person of Indian origin? To answer that, there is an explanation provided beneath to this clause saying that a person shall be deemed to be of Indian origin if he or either of his parents or any of his grandparents was born in undivided India. Sometimes people leave their uh, uh, citizenship also of India because now they have got some PR, they have got some permanent residentialship outside India. In such case also, even if they are not a citizen, but they can be looked with reference to being whether they are being a person of Indian origin or not. So a very important point for you to understand that when I use the term NRI, I am covering all those non-resident who are either citizen of India or who are the person of Indian origin. Now my dear friend, a very important thing which I would like you to know is that in addition to determining your status and rather for determining your residential status as NRI, your residential status as NRI would take color prima facie from the fact that whether you are a resident in India or you are a non-resident. If you are a non-resident then only you can become NRI. And to determine your correct residential status, you should refer to Section 6 of Indian Income Tax Act 1961. Now, this Section 6 provides for two basic condition and two additional condition. If you fulfill either of the basic condition, then you are prima facie a resident. And if you further fulfill two more conditions, both, then in that case, you will be treated to be resident and ordinarily resident. But since I am talking about NRI in this lecture, so I can say, you are an NRI if you don't fulfill any of the basic condition. Now you may say, what is the basic condition, Mr. Bhatia? If you are in India for a period of 182 days or more during the financial year, that is the first basic condition. Second, you are in India for 60 days or more in the financial year and in the preceding four year, you are in India in aggregate for 365 days. So if any of these two basic condition is fulfilled, by default, you become resident. But in the case of NRI, none of these two conditions should be satisfied. But there is a danger. And that danger, my dear friends, is added by Finance Act 21, that is Assessment Year 22-23, for which ITRs will be now filed. This subsection 1A, which was added by the Finance Act 21, that is Assessment Year 22-23, is very important for all of us to note. What does it say? Not this standing anything contained in Clause 1, an individual. So you are an individual being citizen of India. So if you are citizen of India, now this is not applicable to person of Indian origin. It is applicable only to those who are citizen of India. Having total income other than income from foreign sources exceeding 15 lakh rupees during the previous year shall be deemed to be resident in India in that previous year if he is not liable to tax in any other country or territory by reason of his domicile or residence or any other criteria of similarity. See what this subsection 1A of section 6 of Indian Income Tax Act 1961 provides the message. It says that if you are a citizen of India, 
if you have total income which does not include foreign sources exceeding 15 lakh rupees for a particular year in india and you are also not liable to any other country not liable to tax in any other country or territory by the reason of your domicile or residence or any other criteria of similar nature then you will be treated to be resident in india so the whole concept of nri which could be in your mind may fail if you fall into subsection 1a of section 6 so you have to be cautious that whether your case that you are treating yourself to be nri but in the eyes of income tax law you are a resident so such a analysis is very much important for you to be done for your case now i cover up a very important aspect that what could be the various kind of income which an nri may have in india so here i assume that okay you have fulfilled the criteria of being nri as per section 115c and you are further moving into determining that okay what are the kind of income i may have in india which income tax department of india would be looking into at terms of my compliance you may have income from interest maybe nre interest or nro interest in india these are the two accounts which an nri or a non resident may maintain in india and you are also right in your assumption that being a non resident your nre account interest goes exempt but nro is taxable you may have income by way of dividend in india from the shares which you invested in india you may have income from mutual fund may be liquid fund or equity fund wherein you have invested you may be getting dividend you may have capital gain income which may be from real estate which may be from mutual fund which may be from shares which may be or other assets you may have rental income of the property which you owned in india or which you have succeeded in india and further you may have income in form of interest by way of bond interest by way of debenture or income from aif that is alternative investment fund this is just to let you know that okay these are the income which may come in the scope of taxability from the point of view of indian taxation except the interest which you earn on nre account now i come to the discussion that when itr filing is required for a non resident indian under section 139 of income tax law there are few criteria which i am trying to put up before you when your gross total in income in india exceeds the basic exemption limit for the relevant financial year say for an example financial year 21 22 that is assessment year 22 23 the basic exemption limit is 2.5 lakh so if your indian income for the relevant financial year 21 22 is about 2.5 lakh and that is gross total income i am not referring to total income then in that case prime of si you are liable to file itr in india when you are availing exemption under section 54 to 54 gb of income tax act 1961 what it is say as an ri as an nri you might have sold a property in india which could be a land which you succeeded from your parents and after selling that land you are buying another property which is a residential property like flat or bungalow in india now somebody to whom you have talked to he suggested that while you sell a property you buy another property which is a residential property no need to worry about taxation because your capital gain investment is exempt now this is a general understanding but my dear friends for the purposes of determining the nri exceeding basic exemption limit no consideration is given to the exemption of 54 to 54 gb so when you have invested you are under the presumption that since i invested as per law there is no taxability which is appearing in my case hence i am exempt from return but sir being a person not liable to file itr and being a person who is not having income in india there are two different aspects if you don't have any income in india don't worry but if you have income in india then you have to think twice thrice four times that whether i am liable to file itr in india why this kind of suggestion is highly important in recent past sir i have seen nri is receiving notices because they have certain fds which they get renewed in india they have certain investment which they reinvest in india so they are under the presumption since i am an nri and i am not liable to file itr in india this kind of presumption is not serving them so you should think before not filing the return now another criteria when you have incurred expenditure of an amount or aggregate of amount greater than rupees 2 lakh for yourself or for any other person for travel to a foreign country say from your nro you have spent more than 2 lakh rupees for 
लाइक अ स्पॉन्सर और फॉर योर सेल्फ फॉर ट्रेवल टू अ फॉरन कंट्री यू आर लाइबल टू फाइल मेडिटली आई टी आर इंडिया दिस कंडीशन इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर एन आर आईज एज वेल एज अदर पर्सन सिमिलरली वेन यू हैव इनकर्ड एक्सपेंडिचर और एग्रीकेट ऑफ एन अमाउंट ऑफ ग्रेटर देन वन लैक फॉर कंजम्पन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इन इंडिया देन ऑल्सो यू आर लाइबल टू फाइल आई टी आर इन इंडिया सो दीज आर फ्यू वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्राइटेरिया विच वुड लेट यू नो दैट वेदर एज एन एन आर आई यू आर लाइबल टू फाइल आई टी आर इन इंडिया और नॉट Now, my dear friends, I am discussing with you a very, very important section, which is given under Chapter 12 of Income Tax Law. This is ITR filing exemption under Section 115G, and most of the non-resident Indian, like NRIs, are presuming that because of Section 115G, they are not liable to file ITR in India. Now, what it is, what this section is, return of income not to be filed in certain cases. It shall not be necessary for a NRI. to furnish under subsection 1 of 139 a return of his income if his total income in respect of which he is assessable under this act during the previous year consisted only of investment income or income by way of long term capital gain or both and the tax deductible at source under the provisions of chapter 17b has been deducted from such income what does this section want to say it says that where as an nri you have only investment income in india now what is investment income that is specified under section 115c of income tax act assuming that you have invested in shares you have invested in debentures fds etc so they are prime of his i investment income so if you have investment income in india or capital gain from such investment and tds on such income which you have generated for the year by way of income or on capital gain is duly deducted then you are exempt from it unfortunately my dear friend income tax department is not respecting 115g mostly and this i could prove with the help of section 148 notices which i have seen recently being issued to the nris also because the it department might have seen that nri has booked certain fds nri has renewed certain fds nri have deposited certain amount in their account they might have purchased a property but they did not file the return nri might be thinking of that okay i am eligible as per 115g so i am exempt but how would government know that because government has not asked an nri to file certain form to establish that he is eligible for 115g so this is the whole confusion which is taking place and therefore sir i practically suggest to nris sir you may ignore for time being 115g and determine your liability to file itr as per section 139 it does not mean that 115g is not prevailing as on date it is prevailing but unfortunately income tax department has not strengthened its system so as to capture that who is eligible for 115g or who is not and therefore in such cases when a nri who invested in india who has earned say i can say with hard work outside india and then he thought about okay let me invest in india because i have an emotional connect with india unfortunately he might be receiving 148 down the line 2 year 3 year 4 year from the end of assessment year and that pinches him a lot so therefore only i suggest that there is nothing bad if you can file an itr in india that would serve you for future so let me discuss with you that in certain cases i suggest that you should think about filing of itr in india when you have purchased some real estate in india when you have sold certain real estate in india even if you are claiming it is an exam say when you have purchased certain mutual fund or share mind you in the itr purchase is not required to be reported but if you don't file itr department would say okay mr bhatia you purchased property of rupees 1.5 crore rupees maybe from nre account which you know better but we don't know what was the source of that particular amount so let us file the return and if they are asking me down the line 3 year 4 year later than the expiry of assessment year then it is kind of hurting me sir i am investing in india but government of india is asking me to file itr even if it is all white funds cash withdrawal and deposit after a certain threshold limit which may change every year say about 10 lakh for a year deposited then the department may ask you that okay what is the reason that you not file the return but you have deposited so much of amount so you have to be cautious for these cases similarly when you have in your form 26 as certain tds and you are presumption that okay let's say tds is deducted i am not bothered because it is minor amount my suggestion is sir please be bothered when there is tds in form 26 as you should think about filing itr in india
Now comes a question which ITR form to be filed by a NRI in India? May it be ITR 1, 2, 3 or 4? Sir, my practical suggestion is ITR 1 not possible. Mostly NRIs are filing ITR 2 in India. ITR 3 and 4 are liable to be filed only when you have business income in India. To short, I call it PGBP that is profit and gain of business provision. If you have presumptive business in India like 44AD or 44ADA, then in that case you are liable to file ITR 4 and if you have any other consultancy or business income in India, then you are liable to file ITR 3. But as I said, mostly NRIs are liable to file ITR 2 in India. So at the end, my dear friends, uh, I again congratulate you for being NRI, for strengthening Indian foreign currency reserve. But at the same time, I must suggest to you with my professional experience that it is better to file ITR in India rather than thinking of that, okay, since I am earning most of the income from foreign investment and I have 115 G shelter also, why should I file ITR in India? My suggestion is, sir, filing ITR would serve the purpose for a longer period for a safe journey of your. So thank you very much for being with me. Wishing you all the best. Jai.